Welcome to HP Tuner's Ford Mod Motor Training Part 24. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at programming your intake manifold runner control and our variable cam control on Mustang 3-valve 4.6 liter engines. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into our video so we can get started. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our intake manifold runner control and variable cam control programming in our Ford 3-valve Mustang applications. This isn't going to apply to a GT500. They don't have intake manifold runner control or variable camshaft on that engine design, so this is going to be specific in taking a look at just 3-valve GT Mustang applications. First thing I want to do is open up a 3-valve calibration file example. Let's go to File Open. In our calibration file example folder, I'm going to grab a stock Mustang GT 4.6 liter here, so I'm going to grab this very last file, click Open, and then we're going to move into our Engine tab here, and then we're going to go from General into Airflow, and under Airflow here, we're going to be popping into Intake Manifold Runner Control in this video, as well as taking a look at Variable Camshaft within these two tabs here. Now this is going to be specific to a, uh, a three-valve application. Again, V6 Mustang and the GT500s don't have Intake Manifold Runner Control or Variable Camshaft, so this is not going to be a factor in those files, and you'll find you don't even have these tabs present here. So first thing I want to do is take a look and turn our attention into Intake Manifold Runner Control. Let's talk about what we need to do if we've deleted Intake Manifold Runner Control. Now, um, as far as programming and tuning Intake Manifold Control, Intake Manifold Runner Control, if it's present, there's really not a whole lot that we have uh, to, to touch. But let's go through and what we uh, see what we have here in this particular tab. Now, under General, we have a switch and we have a position sensor. Both of these are enabled status. If you have Intake Manifold Runner Control present, the switch is the switch and the logic, so it's going to be turning on or off. Um, whether you're going and having the intake manifold runner control present or not. If we have it deleted, we'll go set this to the disabled status. Now the position sensor is tracking the position of movement in the intake manifold runner control, so whether it's zero or 100%. So if it's zero, that means that it's going in and has an open status. If it's 100, it means it's fully closed and it's going in and having that, that, that kind of status. So we need to have the position sensor because it does translate the movement of the position of where the runner control is at in its functionality. So if we've deleted the intake manifold runner control, then we can go here and turn this to a disabled status. So it ignores both of these and it basically goes in and turns it off. Now, if we are keeping intake manifold runner control, we'll find opening torque percentage versus RPM. This table here is based on engine speed and it's gonna be based on a torque percentage load. If we have a value of zero in the table, that means that we have our commanding intake manifold runners all the way open. And if we have a value of something like 0.9 or 1, that means that we're commanding intake manifold runner fully closed. And we'll find that it's going to be biasing based on engine speed here, where exactly it's going to be in its control routine, whether it's going to be fully open or fully closed or somewhere in between. We'll find it always varies a little bit depending on where we're at in our engine speed because it's trying to always optimize uh, the amount of torque production out of the engine. If we have at low engine speeds, we want to have the longest runner possible in the intake manifold runner design, which is going to give the more torque on the low end. If we're getting into high engine speeds, we want to have the shortest runner design possible or within optimized levels. We'll find in that case a value of zero or open in the control will allow it to have the shortest path of travel, which will give it better high RPM torque. So by having the table set up like this and varying the amount, um, it'll go in and vary the position of where it's at. So that's going to be how this works. Again, we usually don't have to touch this. Um, I haven't found any real gains by editing the table if I have intake manifold runner control still present. Now one factor we need to keep in mind here, if we've deleted intake manifold runner control, this is going to happen if we've installed a Kenny Bell kit or if uh, we're putting in a Whipple kit um, uh, or Ford Racing, maybe you have a Roush supercharger kit you're installing, it deletes the intake manifold runner control. So if we do that, we have to go here and set this to a disabled status. So both of these have to be set to disabled. If we either deleted the intake manifold with intake manifold runner control, whether it's going to be to replace it with a different intake manifold or a supercharger kit that's going to be essentially replacing intake manifold runner control. So in this status here, we have to jump back into general and take a look at some tables that we have to update and keep in mind when we're editing. If we've deleted intake manifold runner control in the engine, um, under math calibration, we have our math with failed load tables. We have an open and we have a closed any editing, any changes we make would be in the open table. And we need to make sure that we're taking our open table here to kind of get things started, copy this, and we're going to go into our math failed load close table and paste. We need to make sure that these tables are going to be identical. And the editing we're going to do 
is gonna be going in and editing your open and then copying any changes and pasting it into our closed. Always have to do that so we don't have any kind of odd load reporting discrepancies or any kind of, uh, any kind of drivability problems because it could transition potentially between these two tables um, even if we're setting our status here in the switch logic to disable or off. Uh, under speed Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.